Hey brewers, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a diacetyl test without fancy equipment. Let's get brewing. My name is Hendo, and I'm from the Rockstar Brewer Academy, where I teach professional brewers how to brew beer with quality, consistency, and efficiency in mind. Head on over to rockstarbrewer.com for that. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Right, let's get started. So during fermentation, yeast create diacetyl. What is diacetyl? Well, diacetyl is a chemical compound in beer that smells and tastes like butterscotch. And if you're making American style beers like IPA or pale ale or double IPA, it's not particularly pleasant. In order to show you how this test works, you need to understand a little bit of what's going on with the yeast at the microbiological level. During fermentation, all yeast create a diacetyl precursor called acetyl oxalactate, but I'm just gonna call it AAL. AAL is excreted by the yeast cells into the beer. And once the AAL is in the beer, it then oxidizes and forms diacetyl. At the end of fermentation, when all the other fermentables have been used up in the beer, the yeast start looking for other energy sources to continue the party. And so they consume the diacetyl at the end of fermentation. But in order to force this process, we need to heat the beer up during fermentation to force the AAL to be converted into diacetyl for the yeast to reconsume. That's why we raise the tank temperature towards the end of fermentation, and we often call this the diacetyl rest. Even though your beer may have hit its final gravity or terminal gravity, fermentation may not be complete. And there's only one way we can test that fermentation is complete, and that's to ensure that all the diacetyl has been consumed. If you're in a big brewery with a really expensive lab, you could test for diacetyl with a spectrophotometer, but most breweries don't have that. So here's how you test for diacetyl on the cheap. Get yourself two plastic water bottles. Let's have a look. Take two samples of beer from the tank. One's gonna be your control sample, so put that aside. With the other, carefully grab some hot liquor from your hot liquor tank. Make sure the water's about 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. That's 122 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Chuck one of the sample bottles into the hot liquor and leave it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Once that time's passed, take it out of the hot liquor bucket and throw the sample into a bucket of cold liquor. What we're doing here is we need to cool the sample back down to room temperature, or at least the temperature of our control sample. We cool the sample down because we're gonna have one control sample and one heated and cooled sample, and we're gonna put it in front of our sensory panel under a blind tasting. Now that you've got two samples ready to test, here's how you check for diastole with your sensory panel. Pour out two samples away from those who are gonna do the sensory analysis. Because we don't want them to know which beer is which. This is a blind tasting. Have your sensory panel evaluate each beer only for diastole. There is gonna be other things going on because we've heated and cooled one of the samples, but that's not important right now. We're only looking for diastole. If the sensory panel can't tell the difference between the samples, then it's a pass. If the sensory panel spots the difference and correctly identifies the heated and cooled sample, then it's a fail. If the sensory panel picks both as having diastole, then you might have something else going on. Either the beer might be a little bit too young or there might be a potential micro issue going on such as PDO. But that's not very likely, unless you're a dirty brewer. In this case, our sensory panel failed the diacetyl test because he could tell that there was diacetyl in one sample and not the other. And if you have a failed diacetyl test, it's no big shakes. You're just in the middle of diacetyl rest and you've just got to wait another day and check it again tomorrow. Once your beer passes a diacetyl test, then you're safe to crash chill it. But if you crash chill before your beer passes a diacetyl test, then you'll never be able to get rid of the diacetyl because the yeast under cold temperatures won't be able to consume the diacetyl and clean it up. So what did you think of this method? Leave a question or comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.